I am so tech unsavvy, it's embarrassing. I panic past the basic level of tech. Like, I can do Insta, I can do Facey, <laughs> but thankfully COVID has made me just kind of face it head on. Second week of Feb, I had seven emails in my inbox and every event that I've been booked for for February, March, April was postponed or canceled. And to suddenly have my entire income out from under my feet, I was like, deep breath, deep breath. It's gonna be okay, pivot, pivot, pivot. started. <laughs> it's amazing what social media can do. Got a mural for a kid's bedroom. I posted on Facebook and someone who had been following me saw that and said, can you do a 50 meter mural? I post regularly to Insta and sometimes to Facebook and just the amount of work that comes through it. So remarkable. Another six hours of painting today. Today is day three. So I only had 10 days to create and with that time crunch, I do better with a budget of time. And I find that my best creativity comes out of pressure. Taking a train during COVID is like having the biggest limo ride to yourself. I'm excited everybody's doing the whole Easter thing and staying home and saying lives while I get my work done, but uh, it's a bit odd. It's a very surreal experience painting here in this building because right next door is Centrelink and there is a line wrapped around this building and all this glass area is my audience and it's really sad because they're all stressed and out of work and I'd probably be in that line as well if it weren't for this job right now so I'm truly madly grateful for it. The big mural journey is complete. One thing that has definitely increased since COVID is the creativity on the sidewalks. The amount of children finally outside doing cool stuff on the sidewalks is really fabulous with chalk. I uh, thankfully had a mural through a local public school and I had to do all the bathrooms. Because the schools were still closed, I was able to come in during school hours. It's kind of nice having the peace and quiet and giving the kids something vibrant and bright and different when they get back to school. I have created a little video that I'm sending to school after school and just messaged one after the other and just said, hey, everyone's mental health, everyone's emotions are being impacted by COVID. Why not brighten up the schools so the kids can just have a better experience while they're there? This was just a boring brick wall. It is May 6th and I am about to do my second performance for a client. They let me paint at home, make a little time-lapse video and speak a little message to the attendees of the event. The choice is yours, attached to fear or attached to curiosity. It allowed me to still keep the work and work from home. And I thought, oh my gosh, that has now opened up the idea of I could technically paint for events in Paris, all from the comfort of my home, which allows me to be a mom, a wife. It's, it's really exciting. <laughs> okay, so today is an exciting day. It is Freedom Friday. It is what, May 15th. I had been booked to perform for an LGBTQIA event called the Sappho Show. And it was so exciting because we initially were going to be filming each from our own homes. It was so electric because none of us had been around people for so long. And here's a room full of creatives. And it was just like kids in a candy store going, oh my gosh, we get to be creative and we're in a room together. No idea what I'm about to paint, um, but so I better put some water in my water bucket and think about something. Gave us such a buzz to be creating with the lights on, with the interaction of each other, and to cheer each other on and be like, hey, I know we all have had it rough with COVID. I know if things are tight, but how beautiful it is to inspire this small audience. It's beautiful to see the process continue until things change and we can all be together in a room again. Woo! Oh. 
<laughs> Yay! I love the beach. June 2nd, and it is the first day working in my new studio space. It's been really quiet work-wise. Supposed to do an event, and I, in that event, I was supposed to create 10 live works for a charity that was helping trafficked victims in Cambodia be free and safe and educate them and feed their family. They too pivoted and they said, Sarah, would you still be willing to create 10 works? The interesting thing is I said yes, and then I realized, wait a second, in a live event, I'm getting that work done in a very short amount of time. And people often think, oh, you're a speed painter, you work quickly at home. Oh no. It like quadruples the time because there's interruptions, there's life, there's phone calls, there's laundry, there's dishes. And it seems like when I paint at home, everything takes an enormous amount of time. Though they only raised about four grand total, four grand in Cambodia goes a long way. And to know that a simple painting could rescue somebody and maybe dozens of girls who am I not to paint? Who am I not to do? And I always tell people that tell me, well, I can't paint, I can't change the world. I always tell them, use what's in your hands. If you're a great writer, write a note of encouragement to somebody. If you're a great chef, bake some cookies for the old lady down the street. You know, just do whatever's in your hand to help others and your life will be so much more enriched. I know as a live artist, often my work is very commercial, and I can own that. When you're creating a work in one hour, you have the pressure, as I do, to have it auctioned for five figures on a regular basis. It, you have to think what will sell, what will go in people's homes. I can see myself entering a season, finally, where I'm creating works that I don't care if they sell or not instantly. It's more about what does the world need to see and what's in me to share with them. And that's what I hope for, is that I do that regardless of the paycheck at the end of the rainbow. It's more like this is what the world needs to see and this is why I'm here to paint it. <laughs>